pass by proclamation dated the first day of September 2023, issued under subsection 1 of section 52 of the Constitution of Grenada, Parliament was prorogued on the fourth day of September 2023. And whereas it is provided by subsection 1 of section 51 of the Constitution of Grenada, that its session of Parliament shall be held at such place within Grenada and shall commence at such time as the Governor General may by proclamation appoint. And whereas it is further provided by subsection 2 of section 51 of the Constitution of Grenada, that there shall be a session of Parliament once at least in every year, so that a period of six months shall not intervene between the last sitting of Parliament in one session and the first sitting in the next session. Now, therefore, I, Cecile La Grenade, Dame Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, Governor General in and over Grenada, do hereby appoint the Parliament Chamber at Montwell Mill in the town of St. George as a place where the second session of the 11th Parliament shall be held at 10 o'clock in the forenoon on Tuesday, the 26th day of September 2023, at the time as a time at which the said session shall begin. And members of the said Parliament and all other His Majesty's officers and loving subjects in Grenada, and all others whom it may concern, are hereby required to take due notice hereof and give their ready obedience accordingly. Given under my hand and the public seal of Grenada this 11th day of September 2000 and 2023 in the first year of the reign of His Majesty King Charles III. God save the Queen. Proclamation by Governor General Dame Cecile F. P. F. La Grenade. Almighty God, members of both houses, that they may wisely deliberate for the good of this country and for the glory of thy holy name. I invite you to join me as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pray be seated. Is it your wish, honorable members, that the houses do now adjourn during pleasure to await the arrival of Her Excellency, the Governor General? If so, please say aye. aye.
Honourable Members and Visitors, the Houses are now back in session. Pray be seated. Undoubtedly, my government has made remarkable progress in advancing its progressive and inclusive transformative agenda. Today, as we stand on the cusp of our 50th anniversary as an independent nation, we are energized and excited about the future. Even in the face of global economic uncertainties, we remain confident that together, we will continue to thrive and prosper as one people, one nation under God. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, as we approach five decades of independence, our theme for this session of Parliament is forward into 50, reflecting on our past, solidifying our future. 
This theme is rooted in our overarching theme for the 11th Parliament, transformative development towards a sustainable, equitable, and prosperous Grenada, which in and of itself is deeply rooted in our vision 2035. Grenada, a resilient and prosperous nation with a conscious and caring citizenry promoting human dignity and realizing its full potential through sustainable economic, social, and environmental progress for all. With God's grace, we have been diligently working side by side to lay the foundation to commence the transformation to build a better Grenada for all. Our focus in this session of Parliament is to continue building the foundation while consolidating these hard-earned achievements and redoubling our efforts in areas where progress has been slow. Celebrating our Jubilee anniversary, Madam President, Mr. Speaker, on February the 7th, 2024, our nation will attain 50 years of independence. This is a defining achievement in and of itself, a testament of the strength, resilience, and the unwavering spirit of our people. We will mark this historic milestone with a year-long commemorative celebration of events, projects, programmatic, and policy initiatives truly befitting of our Golden Jubilee, and which will be designed to have po positive legacy impacts on future generations of Grenadians. The 50th Anniversary Committee has already announced some of these initiatives, including the issuance of a 50th Anniversary Independence Commemorative EC $50 note. Secondly, for the first time, the declaring of 19th of October as a national public holiday in solemn recognition, reflection, and appreciation of the tragic sacrifice and martyrdom of Prime Minister Maurice Bishop, his cabinet colleagues, and the citizens of Grenada who lost their lives on October the 19th, 1983. Third, for the first time, the naming and celebration of our national heroes. Fourth, the renaming of our national landmarks, and fifth, the introduction and teaching of Grenadian history in our schools, which began in the new school year. More details of the events and progress projects will be provided by the National Organizing Committee at the launch of the 50th anniversary celebrations on the 19th of October, 2023. Protecting Grenada's patrimony. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, as we commemorate our 50th anniversary of independence, it is paramount that we, as a nation, protect our patrimony so that future generations of Grenadians can continue to benefit from the courage, hard work, resilience, and success of our people. The decision to sell, buy a freehold, lands on Grand Anse Beach, and other strategic locations on the south coast, which are prime lands for tourist development, to private interests is clearly unpatriotic and deleterious to ensuring that those to whom these lands are sold can be held accountable to develop and engage in robust act economic activity on such lands. To this end, my government has successfully negotiated and reacquired the freehold interest in three of these sites. The site upon which the Grenada Radisson sits, the Kawana Bay site, and the site located immediately before the Umbrellas Restaurant. These sites shall not only be transferred by a leasehold as a matter of policy, aimed at ensuring that the next generation of Grenadians have an opportunity to see how these sites can be utilized. 
It is for this reason that my government will swiftly move to introduce legislation in Parliament within the last quarter of this year to ensure that state or crown lands which are strategically located in our prime developmental and tourist area can only be transferred by a lease and not by way of freehold state. Oil and gas. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, as of today, we are yet to solve the mystery of Grenada's offshore oil and gas reserves. Very little records can be found anywhere within the government, and our technocrats within the ministries and departments have very little information on this matter. In essence, upon assuming office, my government was not provided with any transition report or any files on Grenada's legal or contractual obligations or Grenada's progress in relation to its oil and gas reserves. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, this situation is untenable and completely unacceptable and my government is committed to doing all within its power to unearth the mystery of Grenada's oil and gas status. To this end, my government has established a technical working group chaired by a past Minister for Finance, Mr. Nazim Burke, and comprised of distinguished Grenadians, including Mr. Rodney George, Mr. Richard Duncan, Mr. Raymond Nurse, and the Office of the Attorney General, represented by the Solicitor General, to investigate and to do what it takes to demystify our oil and gas situation. The mandate of this technical working group is to fully assess Grenada's hydrocarbon potential and, if found to be commercially viable, devise a strategy and action plan to explore, develop, and monetize it for the benefit of the citizens and the patrimony of our nation. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government's strategic priorities for this session of Parliament are citizens, one, citizen safety and national security, two, education and skills development, three, youth empowerment, four, health and wellness, five, agriculture, food and nutrition security, six, energy transition and environmental sustainability, seven, foreign policy and trade, eight, restoring the public service integrity, maintaining industrial peace, nine, housing and community development, 10, economic growth and job creation, 11, the creative industry, 12, physical and digital infrastructure, and 13, the blue economy. Citizen safety and national security. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, a safe, secure, and peaceful Grenada is a fundamental pillar of our way of life, and without it, much of our transformation agenda will be brought to a screeching halt. My government is committed to preserving our long-standing record as a low-crime nation and one of the safest places in the Caribbean. While not unique to Grenada, the recent increase in violent crimes involving the use of firearms is a major concern for each and every Grenadian, both at home and in the diaspora. As a peaceful and loving citizenry, we must do everything in our power to nip this trend in the bud. In this regard, my government has established and will convene a National Security Council whose mandate will include to consult widely with Grenadians across all sectors to assist with the creation of a national security policy and strategy to improve and strengthen our national security architecture. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government will introduce CCTV cameras across public spaces and other vulnerable spots across Grenada, Carriaco, and Pitimartney, and the required legislation to ensure 
that the footage from the CCTV cameras can be used as evidence in court proceedings to successfully prosecute criminals. This proactive measure will help enhance surveillance, deter criminal activities, and promote a safer environment for all our citizens. My government will also move swiftly before the end of the year to amend the Firearms Act to provide much stiffer penalties for persons convicted of possession, trading, or use of illegal firearms. A number of important initiatives will be taken by my government related to the Royal Grenada Police Force, the RGPF. We are committed to fostering a more inclusive and responsive approach to law enforcement. To this end, we will initiate a consultative process engaging various sectors of our society to solicit their valuable input on how policing can better address their specific needs. This inclusive dialogue will enable us to develop a more effective and community-centered law enforcement strategy that reflects the concerns and priorities of our diverse citizenry. Having recognized the importance of effective human resource management and succession planning, my government has appointed a human resource manager and a planner for the RGPF. This historic and strategic decision is aimed at optimizing the efficient utilization of our human resource capital. These professionals will, display, will play a crucial role in ensuring that our officers are well supported and the RGPF can continue to evolve and excel in its mission. Recognizing the challenges and trauma that members of the RGPF may encounter in the line of duty, my government is fully committed to their well-being. We will establish access to counseling services to effectively address post-traumatic stress disorder and other comprehensive psychosocial support to our dedicated law enforcement personnel. This initiative aims to prioritize the mental health and resilience of our officers, ensuring that they receive the care they deserve while continuing their vital work in protecting our communities. We are dedicated to optimizing the operations of the RGPF by reevaluating its structure and eliminating non-essential departments. Starting in 2024, we will transition the responsibilities of the licensing and port security departments to civilian personnel, enabling our police force to concentrate exclusively on their primary duties. This strategic move will optimize the RGPS resources and enhance its ability to fulfill its core functions. With respect to His Majesty's prisons, Emphasis will be placed on infrastructure enhancement, enhancing rehabilitation efforts, and promoting self-sufficiency within the prison system. Education and skills development. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government reiterates its philosophy that our human resources are our most precious assets and the fundamental contributor to the social and economic development of our nation. Further, that education is a basic human right. My government will therefore continue to prior prioritize education and skills development as a fundamental basis for transforming our society and people. In the past year, Significant strides have been made in this regard, including one, the removal of registration fees at the pre-primary, primary, and secondary levels aimed at eliminating financial barriers to education, increasing subventions to schools and other educational institutions to cover operational costs. Third, the launch of free tuition program up to the tertiary level. Fourth, 
curriculum development to include the teaching of Grenadian history in our schools, Spanish in primary schools, and the expansion of the teaching of creative and performing arts. Fifth, the approval of a technical and vocational education training TVET policy and strategy to enhance TVET training and skill address skills mismatches in the job market. Six, a roadmap for delivering coding to students has been developed and a pilot project is currently underway. Seventh, the Healthy Smart Nutrition Program strategy has been developed, encompassing interventions in physical education and improved nutrition through local healthier foods. To further transform the education landscape, my government will prioritize the review and amendment of the Education Act to increase the school leaving age to 18, the implementation of the TVET policy and strategy, the launch of the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC reimbursement program, the student loan scheme, the amendments to the early childhood and special education needs policies, among other areas. Youth empowerment. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, Youth empowerment is a top priority of my government for many reasons, including the youthful nature of our population. We will therefore continue to place emphasis on creating a vibrant and empowered youth community that drives social, economic, and cultural progress in Grenada, Carriacou, and Petit Martinique. In the past year, Significant progress has been made in advancing our youth empowerment agenda. These include successful execution of four parish level and two national youth parliaments where 125 young people have the opportunity to debate on issues of national and regional importance. The successful relaunch of the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors Program which seeks to integrate the, view, the views of Caribbean youth towards a robust and inclusive Caribbean community. In Kariakou, the progressive after-school experience program was launched, an initiative that aims to provide quality education and enrich opportunities for children in the village of Winwood, Kariakou. The certification of over 100 participants as part of the Empower program, was complete, who completed various courses and skills training in Grenada and Carriacou, is highly commendable. The reintroduction of cricket competition amongst primary schools and the successful hosting of the Windward Island School Games. In this session of Parliament, my government will continue to emphasize transformative strategies for youth empowerment, including in the area of youth engagement, education and skills development, digital literacy, culture and creative industries, employment and entrepreneurship support. Health and wellness. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government reiterates its commitment to transforming our healthcare system as one of its top priorities with the goal of making Grenada the health capital of the Eastern Caribbean. Despite significant challenges confronting the sector, we have made substantial progress. Key achievements in the past year include, one, the purchase of 83.9 acres of land in Calabini St. George, which will be the site for the construction and operation of Grenada's Climate Smart, Smart New Teaching Hospital Project. Two, the strengthening of human resource capacity through the hiring of additional health professionals and improving employment conditions. Third, the introduction of CT scan services for the commencement of hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis services at the General Hospital, the commissioning of a new accident and emergency unit in November of 2022, six, 
the refurbishment of five theaters at the General Hospital to international standards. Seven, the completion of a new modern pharmacy department at the phase two building of the General Hospital. Eight, the enhancement of primary health care through the launch of primary health care teams and the upgrading of several health centers and medical stations, including Hillsborough Smart Health Center, Victoria Medical Station, the Princess Royal and Princess Alice Hospitals, and the Westerhall and Good Hope Medical Stations. The signing of a memorandum of understanding with the McKinney Foundation, headed by its director, Dr. Timothy McKinney, a graduate of St. George's University, to promote women's health and to provide free gynecological and neurological health care treatments and services to women in Grenada. Tenth, the renegotiation of contractual engagements with the Joint Independent Provider Association, JIPA, for the implementation of the National Health Insurance Budget. These achievements underscore my government's commitment in prioritizing the health and wellness of our nation. The focus of this session of Parliament will be, further, will be to further strengthen human resource capacity and primary health care systems and advance the new hospital and health insurance projects. Agriculture, food and nutrition security. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government's vision for the transformation of the agriculture sector on enhancing food and nutrition security through increasing local food production and consumption, agro-processing, and other various initiatives. Important advances have been made in this regard thus far. My government successfully mobilized 27 million from the World Bank for our food security enhancement project, aimed at providing increased access to farm machinery and equipment, fertilizers, improved crop varieties, better and higher quality breeds of pigs, goats, and sheep. My government signed a memorandum of understanding with St. Vincent and the Grenadines to cooperate on agriculture and food security programs, including crop protection, forestry, livestock, agro-processing, marine resources, and trade. Over 60,000 plantlets were propagated for sale and distribution to our farming communities and in support of the spice replanting project. In keeping with my government's stated policy to invest in emerging sectors, a commission on cannabis le legislation and regulation was established to work towards the decriminalization and legalization of cannabis and the establishment of a cannabis industry. Our focus in this session of parliament will be on consolidating these gains, including accelerating the implementation of the Food Security Enhancement Project to provide direct benefits to farmers and fisher folk, and by extension, our nation. My government will establish three animal breeding centers at Laura St. David, Maribor St. Andrew, and Limla Karaku. Additional cold storage facilities, commercial ice machines, and training in safety at sea will be provided to our fisher folk. The implementation of the OECS Food and Agriculture System Transformation FAST strategy to enhance food production, self-reliance, and economic development. The rollout of the integrated landscape approaches and investment in sustainable land management projects on the Grand Bra Estate, and the continued implementation of the Youth in Agriculture project. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government reiterates its commitment to successful, successfully reforming the Marketing and National Importing Board, MNIB, to support farmers and the agriculture and agro-processing sector 
and the, and the new entity is expected to come on stream no later than the first quarter of 2024. Energy transition, environmental sustainability. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, through strategic alliances with local, regional, and international partners, my government is diligently pursuing its agenda to protect and preserve our pristine environment, including combating climate change and promoting renewable energy. Highlights of major achievements in the past year and strategic priorities in this new session of Parliament include climate resilient training. In October of 2023, key stakeholders will receive training with the Caribbean Climate Online Risk and Ad Adaptation Tool, CORAL, enabling climate resilient decision making. Accreditation to climate funds. My government is actively working on accreditation to the Adaptation Fund and the Green Climate Fund to secure funding for climate initiatives. Resource mobilization. My government, in collaboration with the Commonwealth Secretariat, has completed a resource mobilization strategy. Significant funding has already been mobilized or is under negotiation, including for the Climate Smart Infrastructure Project from the Saudi Development Fund. Moreover, several concept notes have been approved, paving the way for full project proposals to securing funding. Mainstreaming climate resilience. Efforts are underway to mainstream climate resilience across sectors like education and fisheries with a focus on combating coastal erosion and sea level rise. Renewable energy transition. Grenada is committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and is promoting green cooling and renewable energy solutions. The Limla Solar PV Project in Caracou, the Grenada Geothermal Energy Development Project in St. John and St. Patrick, and the proposed energy efficiency project in public buildings are significant steps in this direction. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government reaffirms its commitment to reform the electricity sector as quintessential to the transformation of our nation. This will require a tremendous effort given the gravity and complexity of the current situation. That notwithstanding, satisfactory pro progress is being made in this area. We have developed a national energy policy to determine Grenada's optimal energy mix and have completed an assessment of Grenlake's generation capacity. We are now working feverishly to mobilize resources to expand renewable energy generation. My government is pleased to report that we are at an advanced stage of negotiations in securing funding for a mega solar PV system at the Maurice Bishop International Airport, which will contribute significantly to reducing our reliance on diesel, the modernizing of our electric grid, and the building of resilience in the electricity sector. My government recognizes the need to tackle the modernization and reform of the transport sector and we have undertaken a comprehensive study of the sector with grant support from the Caribbean Development Bank. The results of this important study will pave the way for our interventions in the sector aimed at reducing our transportation problems and greening the sector. Meanwhile, my government will continue to incentivize the adoption of hybrid and electric vehicles through concessions and other forms of support. Waste management. The Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority is investing in recycling facilities, color-coded waste collection, and partnership to tackle waste-related challenges. 
Initiatives for recycling organic waste and landfill improvements are also progressing. Foreign policy and trade. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government is committed to extensive international engagement as a vital tool in Grenada's foreign policy. Our aim is to promote inclusive, sustainable economic growth and raise Grenada's profile on the global stage. My government will establish an effective cadre of diplomatic envoys to aid in economic recovery and investment generation, thereby broadening Grenada's diplomatic trade and investment options. So far, my government has successfully appointed and trained a new group of diplomats and expanded staffing at missions worldwide. We have appointed five sectoral ambassadors uh, and are in the process of establishing diplomatic relations with several African countries. Diaspora outreach is another key component which plans to leverage the Grenadian diaspora's potential contributions to innovation, entrepreneurship, philanthropy, and investment. The establishment of the Grenada Diaspora Advisory Council and the appointment of an ambassador for diaspora affairs underscore my government's commitment to nurturing and enhancing connections with Grenadians abroad. Trade is an area of critical importance for my government as the nation seeks to augment production in the marine, fishing, and agro-processing sectors. Therefore, beneficial trade relationships that provide opportunities for growth and creation of sustainable jobs while simultaneously reducing our food import bill will be explored with a view to expanding and diversifying our export base. Restoring the public service integrity, maintaining industrial peace. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, since assuming office in June of last year, my government has taken decisive steps to restore the integrity of the public service aimed at rebuilding trust between the government and the public. We inherited a demoralized public service caused by years of victimization, low job satisfaction, poor working conditions, a complex maze of ad hoc human resource policies among other factors. Added to that, the industrial climate was poisoned by mistrust, further compounding the negative impact of low productivity and inadequate quality of service delivery. In the past 15 months, my government has undertaken the following to boost the morale of the public service and the industrial peace in the country more broadly. These include the honoring of the Constitution and the ruling of the High Court to pay retroactive pension to our deserving public sector retirees to the tune of $75.1 million, the payment of $1.2 million in docked salaries to teachers and other public officers, the settlement of outstanding salary increases to workers at the T.A. Marishaw Community College in the sum of $10.6 million. The agreement to pay 13% increases to all government employees for the period 2023 to 2025. The agreement on fringe benefits for various categories of public sector workers the temporary relocation of staff into rented premises and the introduction of flexible and remote work to address health and safety problems arising out of the poor state of government buildings, the rollout of twice monthly payment of personal emoluments to public sector workers, including statutory bodies and state-owned enterprises, the collective review of the minimum wage in the public and private sector with a view to increasing the minimum wage. This review is almost complete 
and the new wages are expected to take place from January 2024. In addition, my government has recently approved the Public Service Regularization Strategic Framework and accompanying guidelines for the appointment on a definitive basis to the public service to guide the regularization of government workers, including contract workers and demands. This phase of the regularization will commence by October the 1st, 2023. Furthermore, my government has addressed critical HR needs in the public sector to strengthen institutions and improve service delivery to our citizens. My government will continue to prioritize the reform of the public sector to restore public service integrity, improve labor relations, and treasure our most valued resource. Key initiatives will include implementation of a robust capacity building strategy, accelerating the implementation of the regularization strategy, strategy, active engagement with citizens through town halls, media briefings, and other means of communications, undertaking a comprehensive review and reforms of our current HR policies, housing, community development, and social protection. Housing. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government has completed a comprehensive assessment of our housing needs. The results are not surprising to my government, which points to a significant deficit in both the quantity and quality of our housing stock across the length and breadth of our nation. Too many of our citizens still rely on pit latrines and do not have access to water and in-house bathroom and toilet facilities. As a caring and transformative government, our priorities are clear on the need to improve the housing and basic living condition of our citizens. This is a major priority for my government. In this regard, my government will pursue a multifaceted strategy to address the critical issues related to housing, including a the launch of Project 500. Project 500 is my government's flagship commitment to building 500 Grenadian-style homes across Grenada in our first term. My government has already appointed the Project 500 Steering Committee and Management Unit to plan and implement Project 500. B. The committee is tasked with ensuring Project 500 utilizes new materials and applied technology, ozone-friendly building materials, innovative building techniques, common sewer systems, rainwater harvesting, solar energy, smart agriculture, and designated model farming areas, promoting all-inclusive community development, homeowners association, common laundry and shopping facilities, multi-purpose indoor sporting and cultural facilities, and, indoor recre and outdoor recreational parks. The deployment of water, sanitation, and hygiene, or WASH program, a signature partnership between government, NGOs, private businesses, donors, community groups, and volunteers. It aims to provide households facing financial challenges in Grenada with access to clean running water and adequate sanitation facilities. My government's aim through the WASH program is to eliminate open defecation and pit latrine use as far as possible by the end of 2027 to ensure that all homes have access to indoor water and bathrooms thereby improving living conditions and promoting the overall well-being of all citizens in Grenada, Carriaco, and Petit Martin. D, the pilot for the WASH program will be launched on the 30th of September, 2023, in the, com 
community of Belle Isle, St. David, where 52 homes will be targeted over the next 12 weeks to be outfitted with indoor water and bathrooms. This pilot will be replicated in communities across all of Grenada during my government's first term in office. Community development. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, in the area of community development, the focus will be on building knowledge-driven and people-centered communities. Key initiatives will include sports clubs, self-help activities, beautification projects, hair groups, skills training, anti-drug and alcohol programs, and parenting programs. Support for the education, enhancement, and development. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, the Support for Education, Empowerment, and Development, the SEED program, is being refined through beneficiary reassessment and a new assessment tool. Furthermore, my government will commence the issuance of SEED benefit card for more efficient and dignified benefit distribution the National Insurance Scheme. My government is actively pursuing strategies to improve the social security landscape with the National Insurance Scheme being at the center. In this context, several critical legislative changes have been made and are in the pipeline to enhance our social security system in, in introducing a permanent employment insurance benefit program, improving the self-employed persons regulations, and enhancing the national insurance claims and payment system. Gender equality. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government reaffirms its commitment to the national gender equality. Key initiatives will include increased support for CEDAR's home, a coordinated response to gender-based violence, training, and various projects to promote gender equality. My government aims to continue mainstreaming gender and will establish a men's bureau to advance gender equality and social transformation. Added to that, my government will pursue the full rollout roll of a gender-responsive budgeting in the 2024 budget cognizant of the differential impacts of policies and initiatives on men, women, and children. Economic growth and job creation. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government has been credited for man managing the domestic economy well, with the economy on track to expand by more than 5% this year and other macroeconomic indicators showing signs of strengthening. Undoubtedly, our policies have been growth-friendly and inclusive, demonstrating our strong commitment to fostering growth, job creation, and shielding the population from negative externalities. From the removal of VAT on some 19 essential foods and other basic necessities, to the temporary removal of the petrol tax, to the provision of an electricity subsidy for our less fortunate, these measures are testament to the responsiveness of my government to the challenges facing our citizens. My government's interventions in various sectors has served to boost economic activity and employment. Looking ahead, the macroeconomic outlook is favorable, despite an uncertain global economic environment. Through our policies and interventions in existing and emerging sectors, such as the cannabis industry and the creative economy, my government is confident that economic growth will be robust and sustainable jobs will be created, especially for young people who are entering the job market. Some of the key highlights of major drivers of economic growth and job creation include tourism. 
Madam President, Mr. Speaker, the rebound of the tourism sector is the driving force behind our recent economic expansion and job creation. My government will continue to prioritize the transformation of a tourist tourism sector by creating more opportunities, investment, and training and support to the industry. We believe that our policies have boosted investor confidence and will redound to the benefit of our nation and people. My government has resolved several issues in the sector created by the last administration. Permit me to mention one such major issue. The Kawana Bay arbitration dispute was clearly a lose-lose situation, regardless of who prevailed at the International Center for Investment Dispute. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, you would recall that upon assuming office, Grenada faced an arbitration claim in excess of 100 million US dollars from the development, developers of the Kawana Bay project. The site was closed and abandoned with no work taking place. My government, within the first 15 months in office, have been able to settle the matter amicably by the acquisition of the site and the developers' withdrawal and discontinuance of the arbitration claim against Grenada at a cost of US $22 million, thus saving Grenada tens of millions of dollars in potential damages should we have lost the arbitration dispute. The amicable settlement of this dispute has paved the way for my government to accelerate the development of one of our most picturesque locations on Grand Dance Beach. In this regard, my government is pleased to announce that we are in advanced negotiations with a new development to lease the site for the construction of a five-star hotel, and we anticipate that actual commencement, actual construction shall commence in the latter part of 2024. The creative economy. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, recognizing the significant potential of the creative sector to economic growth and transformation, job creation, and youth empowerment, my government is actively pursuing a deliberate strategy to build out this new and exciting economic stream. To this end, my government has already begun to engage and will continue to harness the creative energies of our creative citizens. In May of 2023, after launching the Office of Creative Affairs, we hosted the very first Creative Economy Symposium to promote the creative economy as a transformative vehicle for sustainable development. This symposium sought to leverage the importance of the creative economy by raising awareness about its potential and challenges, exchanging ideas and experiences, and inspiring synergies and collaborations. The symposium has allowed my government to launch the work in mapping the sector and developing the national cultural and creative industry policy and strategy. Additionally, our local creatives are now able to receive and enjoy 100% duty-free concessions on important gear and or equipment. By the end of 2023, my government will also establish and launch the official film commission and the Cultural and Creative Industries Development Fund. Most worthy of mention, the Office of Creative Affairs has recently collaborated with the Ministry of Education and the TA Marishal Community College to offer specialized courses in entertainment law and introduction to entrepreneurship for creative industries. In this session of Parliament, my government will continue its strategic investment in this sector. Micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, a thriving micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise sector is the backbone
backbone of our nation's economy, contributing to econo economic activity, jobs, and innovation. When my government assumed office, we inherited a poorly implemented COVID-19 economic support program. My government moved quickly to reimagine the CES program, focusing on providing targeted financial support to MSMEs in all sectors, but particularly in the agriculture and fishing sector, positively impacting hundreds of beneficiaries. Added to that, my government extended the micro, small, and medium emphasized enterprises concession regime, which remains in effect up to this day, targeting new MSME startups and the expansion of existing ones. My government will continue to prioritize support to MSMEs to create the enabling environment wherein these enterprises can play their part in the transformative development of our nation. Support to MSMEs MEs will include financial, access to markets, incentives, and entrepreneurship training, and hand-holding support. Physical infrastructure. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, a robust physical infrastructure is a necessary condition for economic transformation. Adequate and efficient infrastructure supports job creation and productivity, facilitates trade and business activities, and improves other sectors, such as education, healthcare, and the environment. Regrettably, our infrastructure development has not kept pace with the evolving needs of our nation. Our roads and bridges are inadequate and poorly maintained. Some of our state buildings are in a state of disrepair. Our physical development has been haphazard. Fortunately, my government is committed to construction, rehabilitation, and maintenance of critical physical infrastructure through public-private partnerships to address the physical development deficit facing our nation while simultaneously stimulating economic activities and creating hundreds of jobs. Some of the major strategic physical infrastructure projects include one, the World Bank supported Grenada Resilience Infrastructure Project, of which a key component is the reconstruction of the Balthazar Bridge in St. Andrew. Two, the rebuilding of the Cliff to Woburn Road and the widening of the Woodlands Roundabout. Three, addressing flooding programs in South St. George and Grenville areas. Four, completing the Molinaire Landslip Project. And fifth, the systematic rehabilitation and renewal of state buildings. Digital infrastructure. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government reaffirms its commitment to the development of a robust ICT and digital economy to keep Grenada abreast with the rest of the region and indeed the world in the conduct and ease of doing business. To this end, significant progress has already been made in advancing this agenda, including expanding broadband access, strengthening data protection, implementing programs to bridge the dig digital divide, including the JUMP program, which targets underserved communities and children, enhancing digital literacy and providing training for digital job opportunities, including in such areas as coding and multimedia. Looking ahead, my government will continue to invest heavily in building a robust digital economy, focusing on data protection and cybersecurity, education and training, digital inclusion, e-government, and job creation. Some specific interventions include, one, the rollout of the initial phase of the new tax system, GTAX, in the first quarter of 2024, 
focusing on value-added tax, personal income tax, and corporate income tax installments. Registered taxpayers for these categories of taxes will be able to conveniently file and pay their taxes through a web-based platform, eliminating the need for physical visits, thereby enhancing the taxpayer experience. Two, continuing to work with our internet service providers to establish a network of free wireless access points in every community, school, government office, tourism site, and recreational park. Three, the expansion of education and training in coding and other critical IT skills. And four, the digitization of our passport and immigration services to include online payment for services and the introduction of online embankment and disembankment cards at Morris Bishop International Airport. The blue economy. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, my government has long recognized the tremendous potential of the blue economy to broaden, diversify, and generate sustainable economic growth for Grenada. The blue economy encompasses a vital array of interconnected and mutually reinforcing industries, including fisheries, shipping, marine tourism, among others. My government reaffirms it un its unwavering commitment to harness the blue economy, including to position our nation as a processing center for fish exports destined to key international markets, Moreover, we will continue to explore potential opportunities in areas such as aquaculture, waste disposal, marine biotechnology, ocean renewable energy, coral farming, sustainable fisheries, bioprospecting, and marine ecotourism, among others. Karyoku and Pretty Martinique. Madam President, Mr. Speaker. My government reiterates its commitment to transform our sister isles into vibrant and thriving economic centers, including tapping into their unique positioning to create unique advancements in the fishing and marine industries. As a government, we can boast of notable achievements in advancing our economic and social agenda on Karakou and Petit Martinique in just under 15 months. These include, one, completion of preparatory work for a smart mini complex to house the ministry to enhance service delivery. Two, customer service training in collaboration with the Grenada Tourism Authority. Three, human resource training in emergency communication, community emergency response, and information management for upgrades and reconstruction of fisheries and ag agriculture infrastructure, including work on the Winwood Fish Market, the Bel Air Nursery Building, and the Limlair Livestock Station Buildings. Fifth, restoration of veterinary services and increased agriculture support for farmers. Sixth, Infrastructure development, including road improvements and construction of new roads, including work on the main roadway to the Princess Royal Hospital. Seven, enhancement in youth, sports, and culture and community development, including upgrading of the Hillsborough Tennis Court and the construction of a turf cricket pitch in Pretty Martinique. And eight, social development initiatives, including housing repairs and medical assistance. For 2024, the strategic priorities for the continued transformation of Karyaku and Pitti Martinique include, one, commencement of construction works on the smart ministerial complex, two, continuation of staff regularization and training, three, 
construction of a commuters building and jetty in Hillsborough to facilitate the movement of people to and from Karakou. Four, ongoing infrastructure development, especially the Bel Air Main Road and Pity Martinique Enhancement Project. Fifth, focus on agriculture, including fish market completion, jetty construction, and livestock management. Six, review and re-establishment of the Marine Protected Area Management. Seven, youth skills development programs and structured housing support mechanism. Eight, construction of a sporting and cultural center and tennis court. And nine, repairs and construction of perimeter protection for playing fields and community development projects. Legislative agenda. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, finally, allow me to touch on the legislative agenda for this session of Parliament. Of necessity, my government will pursue an ambitious legislative agenda to support our nation's transformative development. In the past 15 months, we have taken to Parliament several pieces of critical legislation, including amendments to the National Insurance Act to inter alia introduce a permanent employment, unemployment insurance program to strengthen our social security system, the Disaster Management Act to enhance disaster and climate resilience, regulation on electricity generation, expansion planning, and competitive procurement to support a greener and low carbon economy, to name a few. My government wishes to place on records its commendation to the Attorney General and her staff for their tremendous work in advancing our legislative agenda. The priorities for this session of Parliament will include the Energy Efficiency Act, the Fiscal Resilience Act, the Labour Code or the Employment Act and Labour Code Amendment Bill, the Mental Health Bill, the Film Commission Bill, the Freedom of Information Bill, the Firearms Act, and the Crown Lands Act, to name a few. Conclusion. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, to whom much is given, much is expected. The people of Grenada have given us a strong mandate to transform Grenada. We have embraced this mandate wholeheartedly and have made remarkable progress in a very short period. By working together with diligence and unwavering resolve, we can realize a better Grenada for all. In this context, my government reaffirms its theme for this session of Parliament as forward to 50, reflecting on our past, solidifying our future. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, members of Parliament, in closing, I wish to draw our attention, both individually and as a nation, to the inspiring words contained in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us rise to the challenge before us and seize the opportunities that lie ahead for a better future. It is therefore my distinct pleasure to declare the second session of the 11th Parliament open. Thank you, and may God continue to bless us all. Be it resolved that the Honorable Houses of Parliament record their thanks 
for the gracious address delivered today to the Houses by Her Excellency the Governor General. Be it further resolved that the date on the address be deferred to a date to be named. Mr. Speaker, I stand to second the motion. Madam President, I wish to associate the Senate with the sentiments of the motion. Madam President, I second the motion made by the leader of government business in the Senate. Honorable members of the House of Representatives, the question is that this Honorable House of Parliament record the thanks for the gracious address delivered today to the Houses by Her Excellency the Governor General. Be it further resolved that the debates on the address be deferred to a date to be named. All those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say no. The eyes have it. The question is that the Honorable Houses of Parliament record their thanks for the gracious address delivered today to the Houses by Her Excellency the Governor General. Be it further resolved that the debate on the address be deferred to a date to be named. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those of the opposing view say nay. Well, the ayes have it. Honourable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just wish with your leave and the, pres and the President's leave to acknowledge the presence of the, of the Honourable Terence Group, Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, who is with us this morning. Uh, Madam President, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the adjournment of the Houses time and time. Mr. Speaker, I second that motion. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, I wish to associate the Senate with the sentiments of the motion. Madam President, I second the motion made by Honorable Leader of Government Business in the Senate. Honorable members of the House of Representatives, the question is that this House be adjourned, sign it aye. All those who have that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary opinion say no. The ayes have it. Indeed, the ayes have it. Thank you. 
Honorable members of the Senate, the question is that the houses be adjourned. Sign it aye. All those who are in favor say aye. aye. Those of the contrary view say nay. The ayes have it. The houses are adjourned. <laughs>